Hello everyone and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Last week I shared a card using some L'Enfant products and this week I am back with some more L'Enfant inspiration. Uh, again with some stamps that I have never used and then also of course a stamp from last week. I'm using the Let's Go Nuts, Happy Hugs, Acorn House, the Grassy Borders and the Large Slimline with Sliders from L'Enfant. I also decided to stamp all of the images using Crunchy Leaf from L'Enfant and I'm going to show you how I colored every image by just showing you one and then I repeated the same coloring process on all of the others. So this is the first squirrel and I love 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 these adorable critters. Um, I had these stems at Let's Go Nuts for a while now and I just didn't get around it just like I said last week. Um, I didn't get around to play with my new L'Enfant products but I'm here today showing this card and I know that normally I create lots of cast cards, clean and simple cards. Um, that's well lately what I really prefer doing. Uh, but that doesn't mean that I don't make any scene cards. I'm sorry for the the baby hairs that are from time to time uh, showing up um, but today we are here with a scene card and I used more images than on the clean and simple cards uh, but I think you will also see that although I made a slimline card um, and I used several more images than normally uh, that it's still quite simple but it's a scene and um, well, I know that some of you appreciate that more than cast. Uh, I know that some of you prefer cast over scenes. Um, but just, well, I love doing both. I have been doing a lot of clean and simple. But the one doesn't mean that I don't do the other. So that was one of the squirrels. And I will be using the same markers for all of the others. And actually the marker combination I'm using today for this card is quite limited. I also have these nuts that I'm doing and then I will show you the hugging squirrels from the happy hugs uh, how I colored that as well as the speech bubble which wasn't really fancy I just added the blue <laughs> onto the rest of the speech bubble but okay um, Oh, and for these squirrels, I decided to slightly change the color combination, but it's really subtle. Um, just the darker markers are different. Um, so this one is the same. Just coloring from darkest to lightest, going in there twice, because I prefer having at least two layers. And I'm trying to have my shadows all, over, all the time on the right. Um, the nuts I did differently, but... You cannot see it now but I just changed it up every time because they can be twisted and turned onto your card and therefore I wanted to have different um, different ways of shadows so that I could tuck them uh, and turn them and it would all be uh, with the same idea so this squirrel is like the other one E59 E57 but then the second one I will do E47 E57 As you can see here and it's only the darkest one that changes because I actually use the E33, E53 almost on every brown combination that I am using. Um, so yeah, that returns but that's not an issue because well the one squirrel is creating a shadow on top of the other and you know it avoids uh, the same colors next to each other. If you sort of get what I mean. Um, but I just worked my way through all of the images. Taking my time also adding details onto the eyes and mouth of all of these squirrels. Because of course with the brown ink it's quite subtle. Uh, and my browns are quite dark. Um, <laughs> so just for that I decided to first add the details using um, Copic Multiliner. And that helped me. So those are the squirrels. And now I'm just going to use B000 
to color the bubble. You can also work with shadows over there, but I just decided to keep it subtle, just add a soft layer of blue. And then I'm onto the acorn house, which was also one of the dyes that I bought together with the Let's Go Nuts stamp set and didn't go around, so okay. Uh, fixing that today, I cut out this house using the wood grain cardstock, the light brown ones from Lonfon, and then I decided to add a little bit of this dress ink on top of it. On the other parts I will not add anything, just on the parts of the wood grain. Then I cut out the large slimline width slider out of the same well, paper, so the perfect covering paper. I cut it out twice so that I had one for my background and adding everything on top there. And I cut it a second time to be able to cut my borders like these here and have those stitching details running completely through on top of my card. Now I'm slightly blending a bit, I'm also going to add a few splatters but keeping in mind that this paper cannot handle water so I am keeping it limited but I wanted to have a bit of texture on there. And then I ripped the paper. Um, so I had to take it one of the grassy borders a bit lower to avoid the the stitching detail that I ruined. And the yellow paper that you can see on the right to put behind the windows of the door and the window of the... well, that I will put on the roof. Uh, I just colored Transotype Perfect Coloring Paper using yellow 11 Copic marker. Okay, so now I'm going to remove that purple tape and then you will see here I ripped it apart. Uh, luckily it was the highest border so I had some wiggle room and I can just add it a bit higher on top of my background. But I just prefer it when I can just line it up on the bottom. <laughs> so yeah, that was a bummer. I cut it out again and then I decided to add a bit more of ink blending on top of it to get the detail again and then a bit more splattering. like this so now my border is back again um, and here I I was really watching out that I was not ripping this border as well but as you can see cutting off that part really made this border really really light so I decided to mask off those edges again and just ink blend a bit of the darker color back on top of the top of my grass and then of course half of the splatters were gone, so I decided to do that again as well. And once I was happy with this border, I started on the sky. So as I said previously, I had cut out the large slimline with sliders two times. So here you have the other one that I will add some blues on top. I just added this little pencil mark to make sure that I was blending low enough. And then I just started. I used Mermaid Lagoon, Chipped Sapphire, Black Soot and in the end I also took Faded Jeans to have a nicer transition between my Mermaid Lagoon and the rest. And my black suit is a bit dry. I need some refills, um, but it's currently out of stock. So waiting for that, <laughs> then I will get the refill. Uh, but that's why I am doing this again and again and again. The blues are refilled again, because I have bought the refills already. Um, so you will see it's much juicier and if your pads are juicy enough you won't need to go back and forth the same amount as I just did. And now it's just going back and forth, keep blending, keep adding ink until I'm happy. I'm going to make a really dark night sky. 
um, also going to add some splatters later on um, but I was going heavily handed I wasn't going to build up the colors just because I knew that I wanted it really really dark um, so I just went for it you know I decided to take another blending brush. I have several good blending brushes from Time for Tea Designs. I also have Studio Kacha, where I'm really happy about. Um, but the ones I'm using here are just cheap makeup brushes uh, that I cannot get anymore in my store. So that's why I switched onto some brands and I like them so far. Um, but just to have enough blender brushes, I had to use these today, and some of them aren't. That great um, so to avoid that I took a, a smaller one because they are less used so the hairs are more firm and together it's easier to get that that line where I want the transition to be and now this was the most important part for my background I think just getting the transition between my really light blue and then just the color above And then I went back again towards the top to have that last code. And as you can see, these blues are really, really juicy. It's actually really funny when I take them the black, I'm like, oh yes. There was nothing in it. <laughs> there is still some leftover in it, but well, it's different. <laughs> so that's my background, and now we are going to fit it with splatters. Um, just before I start doing that, I am um, going to make sure that I am preserving my images um, as well. I decided to add some water droplets and quite quickly. Um, just dry it up with a paper towel because, as I said, this paper cannot handle water. Um, but then before I'm going to add my white gouache, I am going to cover the images just like this. Uh, because when I splatter white gouache, it's going everywhere except on the card that is like the standard uh, situation. I think I need a splatter box, but then again, having that in on camera, I think that's not really handy. Oh well. Um, it's going everywhere and always on the images if I'm not covering them. So just a heads up if you're like me, cover it up, um, use some uh, leftover paper or just like me, a uh, really cheap paper towel, uh, anything like that. And then I could remove my mask, well, my purple tape. So that being done, I can assemble the house and then we can really assemble everything together. So I'm using some liquid glue for the acorn house and I think this house is adorable uh, especially when you have of course the squirrels here. I don't know with what I would um, use it else than the squirrels however because it's so well particular I don't know. I'm also adding this tiny keyhole. Um, I made a yellow piece for that as well. And then I can add it all together on top of the base of this acorn house. Again, some liquid glue. Trying to center it, not that it's that important. I'm going to cut off quite a large piece. But at this time I didn't know that yet. So. Adding the door, I wanted it slightly underneath the stairs, so I just lifted it up again. And then it's time to add a keyhole, as well as the final window, that you can add on several places, but I wanted it centered. Then in the acorn house, there are also a lot of extra elements that you can use for the details. I didn't choose any of it because I wanted it to... Well, I'm making a scene, but I wanted a simple 
sort of scene, but you know me. So now I'm going to lay everything out sort of to make sure that I know where everything can go and here I was thinking about cutting off a piece of the house. And then I need to figure out where I'm adding the squirrels. I just sent out as much squirrels as possible um, as well as the uh, nuts that I used. Um, just adding a lot on top of my paper that I was going to color and then later on I will see what I can use and what not. Um, and it was really a while since I made a scene card so it was quite fun getting everything assembled and thinking about how to to fit everything on top of the card. Um, but I got, got used to it again and uh, well also about the assembling uh, you will not see me add any of the nuts on top of this card while filming. I actually thought I'm going to add them randomly afterwards. Uh, but then when I added everything I completely forgot about the nuts. They were also a bit further on my desk so I didn't saw them anymore. Um, and then when I stopped filming I realized that I didn't add any of them and I colored a lot of them. Uh, so I just randomly added some of these nuts as well so just before you think huh but the pictures they are showing nuts and she didn't add any i colored them together with you so i wanted to use them and i just added them randomly before i'm going to tear everything really smart i first stamped the sentiments and normally when i'm at this, this stage I am always super excited about starting to assemble, adding things within foam squares, with scotch tree and foam tape, with liquid glue and I completely forget about the sentiment and then afterwards I'm like, okay, but now I have an issue. Yeah, just because I forgot about it. So, I was super happy that I thought about stamping out the sentiment before I started everything together. So that's what I did. But if you forget it and you have backed the back of your brass in this case or anything else really well with foam tape or anything like that or just flat then normally it shouldn't be an issue but it's like last minute adding that and then it might fail that's just no too stressy. So I added scotch tree and foam tape and it's thicker than thin foam squares. But I'm also adding that house and with all the layers of the papers I thought that just running the scotch tree and foam tape completely through uh, was going to be bulky. Just because it wasn't even underneath so I added some thin foam squares there where the house is. And before I'm going to add it, that layer of cross, I'm first trimming off the excess of the house. Because that's easier. The more is on top of your panel, the harder it will be to trim it off nicely. So I did that and then it was really time to play because it's just adding all of the adorable critters. And well, seeing the scene really come together and I really love that about scene cards. Once you have an idea, <laughs> which comes along with me while I'm crafting, once you get that idea, then Often it's just so much fun to really see that come alive. So onto these final images. And as I said, I will add after filming some of the acorns that I colored. I also decided to add some glossy accents there where there was... Um, well, the windows, um, just because it really makes the glass look like glass, because it's a bit shiny. Um, so I filled in all of those yellow gaps that I had uh, using some glossy accents. Now, if you don't have a fine tip applicator like I, um, then you can always use some sort of a needle to really get into the, into the corners of your smaller areas where you cannot go with a tip that is on your glossy accents bottle. 
like I'm doing here and then you can add some more if you want to <laughs> you don't need to do that I'm spreading it again and then I'm going to the door and I will do exactly the same I'm just using that needle already now because I don't want the glossy accents to, to start drying before um, I have everything wiggled around it's like decorating a cookie and I'm saying this not because I can because um, well I have never worked with glaze on top of the cookies but I'm following some people on Instagram that are really talented and they also use some sort of a needle to spread that out so if you're a cookie maker that is decorating the cookies like crazy gorgeous um, then you know what I mean <laughs> with this uh, little tip and that is uh, my card without the extra acorn of course so I hope that you enjoyed this video and of course the end result that you enjoyed um, how I created this scene card um, once again if you have any questions you can reach me in the comments if you don't want to miss out of any of my videos then please subscribe to my channel uh, I would love to share some more ideas with you have a wonderful day bye